In this week's video, I get into the important topic of not only why people leave organizations, but what makes them stay on the flip side. In 2001, a very clever construct was created that I'm going to dig into that helps explain what keeps people in organizations. And as a bonus, I get into some of the nerdiest books on organizations that I have ever read on summer break. Let's do it. What's going on YouTube? Jamie Potter here, PhD in organizational behavior from the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania. My goal in this channel is to unlock the value of research for organizations. And with that in mind, this past week, I went to the internet, I Googled, I binged a little bit, and I was looking to see sort of what are the biggest problems these days in 2019 and 2020 for CHROs in organizations. That is for the heads of HR who are thinking about all issues, people and talent and humans. What are the issues that they have? And especially what are sort of the perennial issues they have? What are the ones that keep coming up over and over? And when you read about this, not only on Google, but also in the literature, you come to this one topic over and over and over. And that is the idea of employee retention. That is, I bring talent into the organization. We all know that organizations are made up of people, right? There's the one side of the coin, which is talent acquisition. How do I get people in the door? How do I attract them to my organization when they have all kinds of other options, including the Googles and Amazons and Facebooks of the world? But once they're in the door, it's not enough just to have top talent for you know, six to 12 months, you wanna keep them once they come to your organization. That is the flip side of the coin, which is employee retention. And needless to say, this is a very difficult issue, especially with the gig economy and more fluid careers. People move around much more. They have many more options. There's been a big culture shift since, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago when people would often stay in the same organization their entire career. It's much less common nowadays. And so with that, how do organizations and CHROs think about employee retention? And as with all things in the organizational literature, the discussion of this topic of employee retention goes back some time, in this case, over 50 years, to a book aptly called Organizations a good title and this book actually covers a number of different topics so this is by Jim March and Herb Simon two sort of, of the fathers of organizational study and Herb Simon separately known as you know he founded a lot of topics in cognitive science and decision science and so these two authors came together in the 50s to write this book on organizations and one topic that they hit on of many is the idea of voluntary turnover and why does that exist? Sort of what's the underlying psychology behind that for individuals? Small side note here, I would recommend people, anybody really thinking about a PhD especially, there are some of these seminal books like Organizations by Martin Simon, like The Social Psychology of Organizations by Katz and Kahn, A Behavioral Theory of the Firm by Sired and March, if you're ever feeling either really bored or really excited about organizations like I feel all the time, definitely pick up one of these books. I actually spent one summer when I was in my PhD reading a social, the social psychology of organizations. And I find it absolutely riveting because it's a lot of just sort of open-ended discourse. It's not like a paper these days which has 150 citations. It's just some of these seminal thinkers in the field just kind of laying out their thinking and talking through the different ideas. And if you're thinking about a PhD or trying to come up with a dissertation topic you're passionate about, you could do much worse than going to one of these books and just reading it over and over. There is literally 
ideas for dissertations sprinkled throughout the entire book. Tangent aside, so in this seminal book organization by March and Simon, in talking about voluntary turnover, they sort of address it as occurring for the obvious reason, right? For attitudinal reasons, as they say. People leave jobs because they're not satisfied with the job and they don't feel committed to the organization, right? That sort of intuitively makes sense. However, if you look at a couple of authors, Lee and Mitchell, who wrote several influential papers on turnover, one being the topic of the unfolding model of turnover, they actually address four prototypical ways that people leave organizations. And many of them don't actually have to do with job satisfaction, right? Many of them are people that are fully satisfied, but something external happens, a shock, as they say. Maybe someone's spouse gets a job elsewhere and then they have to leave, right? They move cities and then pick up and start somewhere else in a new company. So actually there are a number of cases, very prototypical cases of turnover that don't exist because of job dissatisfaction. So if it's not just job dissatisfaction, then what else is it that keeps people in organizations? And this is a very practical question for CHROs especially. If I'm trying to keep somebody in an organization, the obvious seems to be, okay, help them enjoy their job more, maybe pay them more, all these sort of obvious things. But there's actually more to it. And that's where this paper in 2001, again, by these same authors, as well as a few additional ones of the unfolding model of turnover, uh, that's Lee and Mitchell and colleagues, talk about this idea of job embeddedness, which is a very important one. And what they actually find in this paper in 2001, as well as a separate paper in 2004 that digs a bit deeper, is that job embeddedness above and beyond job satisfaction and organizational commitment actually keeps people in organizations. So the question now is what is job embeddedness? And if I'm a CHRO, how do I embed people in jobs more effectively? So job embeddedness is sort of a larger topic. I'm not gonna dig into the whole model they have. They actually have this three by two model of job embeddedness, six different dimensions of it. But largely what it is, is just different ways that a person is connected, not only within the organization, but also externally in their community. Because the more connections or the more links, as the authors say, that somebody has within an organization, within a community, the more likely they are to stay. And it's sort of a really intuitive idea that didn't fully get fleshed out until this 2001 paper and saying, you know, if you want people to stay, Make sure they are linked to a lot of people in the organization. Make sure they have lots of friends in the organization. Make sure they're a part of a lot of different intertwined teams. But also aside from that, make sure they're happy in their community. Make sure they're a part of different groups. Make sure they're a part of a church. Make sure their spouse is happy with what they're doing. Make sure that the kids are in the right school. If you have all of these different links, then a person is far less likely to leave an organization because they're losing out on a lot of different things, not only in the company, but also in their life and in their community more broadly. And interestingly enough, the 2004 paper that sort of builds on this idea of job embeddedness, decreasing turnover, finds that off the job embeddedness, that is embeddedness in the community and outside of the organization, is actually the primary driver of decreased attrition uh, at companies, much more than on-the-job embeddedness. On-the-job embeddedness, actually, side note, is what drives more of the performance aspect. If you have on-the-job embeddedness, you're more likely to perform well at work, as well as do what are called organizational citizenship behaviors. That is extra role behaviors, not actually required for your job, not actually in the job description, but very helpful for the organization. Whereas it's this off the job embeddedness, am I linked to my community and such that drives the decision to stay in an organization. So if you are a CHRO or a head of HR and having a retention problem amongst your top employees, it's important to think beyond just simple attitudinal variables as is common. It's 
think beyond job satisfaction, organizational commitment, and even pay, and start thinking about what is keeping this person linked within the organization as well as outside of it. And the more links that person has, the more likely they are to stay. That is it for me this week, YouTube. Again, definitely like the videos, subscribe if you're finding this interesting, and please do comment below with any other topics that you'd like to see in future weeks. I sort of decide week by week based on whatever's interesting me, what I'm gonna talk about. So definitely jump in and let me know what you'd like to hear more about. Until then, enjoy the weekend and I'll see you later.